daughter Lauren, his son Kendrick Jr. Hey, They're the best advertisement for him there is. I'm recording. Yeah. Now look, I'm glad to be here, and we got two choices. It's hot. Yeah. And I know you've been waiting, but I've tried to be a friend to Florida. And you know, most of you do anyway, that Kendrick is a very close friend of Hillary's and mine. Matter of fact, the only reason you're stuck with me today is that the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Defense are the only two people in the President's cabinet who cannot participate in politics. But I did get a call last night late telling me I better give a good speech for Kendrick down here today. I'm not too big on preaching to the saved. I know that all of you are for Kendrick or you wouldn't be here. Is that right? So I'd rather tell you what I think you ought to say to everybody else in Palm Beach County and throughout Florida between now and its primary and now the general election. This is supposed to be a tough year for Democrats anyway because most people don't feel much better off than they did a year and a half ago. Unemployment is still high. And the Republicans have a great line. They say, you know, they didn't fix the mess we left them in a year and a half, so you ought to throw them out and put us back in. Except they want to do all over again what got us in the mess in the first place. So, let me talk to you just briefly, a little seriously. This is a complicated decision for the average voter because it doesn't come kind of political rally and isn't active in parties because a lot of people are still out of work. And a lot of people who are at work are insecure about it, and having a tough time paying their bills, and a huge number of homes are still worth less than the mortgages on them. Yep. And the independent voters who are doing okay economically are worried about all the government spending and the rising deficits and the increasing debt. I get all that. So here's what I want to say to you. Look, I love Kendrick I mean, I'd be here for him if I was the only vote he had in the entire country. I, I don't care about that. But I also believe with all my heart that he should be the next United States Senator from Florida. ideologues in the Congress. We need people who actually look at the evidence and think in practical terms. I mean, look at what this guy's already done. And I, I want to talk more about that in a minute, but I mean, taking the lead in establishing this National Task Force on Home Mortgage Fraud. Taking the lead with Senator Nelson and saying Florida's got a big stake in its tourism industry and preserving the environment, you shouldn't have offshore drilling. Taking the lead. And so many other things that he's the only person you can vote for who's actually ever gotten anything done in Washington. <laughs> and he hadn't been there long enough to be too messed up by all the craziness about Washington. He's just been there working for you. You need people who see this for what it is. Being president, being senator, being congressman, they are jobs. And you either do things that help people and they're better off when you quit than when you started, or you don't. This is not complicated. This is not about rhetoric. Now, I know a lot of people are mad and a lot of people are frustrated, but I want you to think about this. Those of you who are, particularly those of you who are over 40 will know this. You just forget about politics a minute. Every time in your life you made an important decision, just because you were mad, there's about an 80% chance you made a mistake, isn't it? <laughs> so what I want you to think about is how people can deal with their frustration and their anger and their fear and their worry. What is the best way to do that? And here's what I'd like to say about it. The country normally turns to the Democrats when things are all messed up. <laughs> things are going along well, they just soon vote for Republicans, they like to hear them talk. <laughs> all sounds so good, but then when they govern, yeah, oh my they goodness, and they turn back to us. So the Democrats won a majority in the Congress in 2006, it got bigger in 2008, 
President Obama was elected in 2008. I got elected in 1992 because the country was in a mess. Jimmy Carter got elected in 1976 because the country was in a mess. That's how come we get elected. So people hire us to fix things. And that explains why we're under duress now. People think, well, it's not all fixed. Well, what I want to tell you is we were in a big hole. Yep. And I hope Getting deeper. that for everybody in Florida, not just the Democrats, but the independents and Republicans too, I ought to have some credibility talking about jobs and budget, deficits and budget surplus. So here's what I want to say about all that. It is true that the deficit has gotten bigger, but when President Obama took office, he had a different problem than I did. When I took office, the economy was in a ditch because interest rates were too high and people couldn't afford to borrow money to start small businesses or expand businesses or expand manufacturing. We weren't enforcing our trade laws. We had a lot of problems. We could deal with that stuff and keep going. And then the last four budgets I presented were all surplus budgets. We paid $600 billion down the national debt. The economy was actually shrinking and nobody was investing at zero interest rates. That's why he voted for the stimulus and that's why I would have voted for it if I had been in Congress. And people say, oh, it didn't fix the economy. That's right, it didn't. But it kept it from getting a whole lot worse. And I want to remind you all, I want to remind you, when people don't want the stimulus, I want to remind you of something. Number one, it was divided in thirds. Only a third of it went to create new jobs. A third of it went to give tax cuts to modest income Americans for a change so they could afford to go to the grocery store and keep the local grocer in business. A third of it went to aid the state and local governments so we wouldn't have to lay off a million teachers and health care workers or raise taxes to keep them on. Either one would have been a disaster in this economy. The third jobs went to roads and bridges and water systems and clean energy systems and every independent audit says they created more jobs than they were estimated to create. This kept it from being worse. And since most of it's one time spending, it won't contribute much to the long term debt. As soon as the economy comes back, that part of the deficit will go away. By contrast, after I left you with four surpluses, paid $600 million down on the national debt. 